Secret number nine, overcome the tendency to complain. We have a tendency to think that if we could just get everything right in the world around us, then we would remove those conditions from our lives that keep us from being peaceful and everything would be wonderful. In fact, the habit of complaint is something that I think people would take with them into heaven. I think that I can imagine worldly people, people, the complainers, making a hell of heaven. It's the attitude of the mind and not the conditions of the world that determine the state that you live in, inwardly and outwardly. And I say that because it's not just a question of that when you have inner peace, then you're peaceful. That's fairly obvious. But in fact, you attract to yourself what you put out into the world, so that if you put out a complaining attitude, the world is going to keep on giving you cause for complaint. You will attract those very things that are, are to be complained about. So that you, you solve one problem, you get rid of that irritating cat yowling on the uh, fence of your yard at night, you get rid of those children that are making so much of a fuss in your yard, um, all the various things that bother you, and you keep getting more and more because you're the one who attracted them in the first place. Whatever energy we put out is what we draw back to ourselves. We put out kindness, we get kindness back. We put out peace, we get peace back. And so if you want to have peace of mind, and if you think, well, but it's hard to have peace of mind when the world around me is so unpeaceful, remember that to a large extent you create that world. There are many little worlds we all live in, and you create the little world that you have drawn into your immediate orbit. This is a law of life, and it's not one that you can, uh, you can discount as being just coincidence. Each person lives in his own little world. I had a very interesting experience in college because I wanted to be a writer, and my roommate also wanted to be a writer. And he was the type of writer who, and poet, who was very sort of volatile. He felt that he needed to emote. He felt he needed to react. He needed to feel that things were either wonderful or terrible. And he felt that this was living because he was really uh, intensely uh, engaged in whatever, whatever happened to him. Well, the odd thing was that every time he went out by himself, something dreadful always happened. One time somebody pulled a gun on him. Another time six men pulled knives and jumped him and he ran for his life and just barely escaped with it. And always something happened, some riot or whatever. Whenever we went out together, everything was peaceful. Because I, and I used to feel, well, I'll never be a good writer because I don't react like that. Um, I don't feel that things are all wonderful or terrible. They just sort of are things and I can enjoy them as I as I wish, but I, I didn't feel that my life depended on, on those things. And I used to feel, well, I just don't have the soul of a poet, and I'll never be successful as a poet. And uh, uh, I remember the night that he came home uh, after those six men had pulled knives and jumped him in a, in a street. The street was only a block away. And if you can believe this, he came home panting and just collapsed on the bed. and. Uh, I thought, gosh, nothing ever happens to me. So I went out looking for those people, thinking I, ought to get, I, I need a little excitement in my life. But uh, all I saw was a man smoking a cigar peacefully in, in a doorway and a stray cat crossed the road, and that was about all that happened. Well, uh, I've seen this happen again and again, that what people put out, they get back. I was uh, a, a friend of John Ball, the uh, mystery writer, and he took me on a uh, visit to the Pasadena uh, Police Department. They're, they were friends of his, and asked the uh, lieutenant there if he wouldn't take me out to see a typical uh, evening in the, on the police force. And the police uh, men said, well, I don't know, but uh, okay. But he said, now listen, he told me very urgently, if anything happens, I don't want you to get out of the car, just stay right foot, I'll handle it, don't you think about doing anything. And uh, so I thought, fine, it's all right. So we went, and he said, this is a particularly bad neighborhood, so I just want you to be really careful. Things are happening here all the time. 
And we drove and we drove. Nothing happened. Everything was peaceful. Finally, in desperation, he wanted to take me down into the area where all the prostitutes were walking. At least he could reprimand or, or arrest or whatever a couple of prostitutes, thinking that, that something had to happen on this evening when he was showing this person from out of town the sights of the city from the policeman's viewpoint. So we went into this area. Nobody on the streets. Nothing happened. And uh, I had not expected anything to happen because nothing ever seems to happen to me in that way because I was feeling peaceful. And I feel peaceful. Well, the thing is that when you have peace, you'll suddenly find that there isn't anything to complain about. But if you don't have peace and think that you'll get it by complaining, then that lack of peace will keep on bringing you more and more reasons for complaint. Don't complain. Be peaceful. And the world will reflect what you are.